All right. Beautiful. Praise God. How many of you are glad to be in the house? Thank the Lord tonight. I'm going to run as fast today because we have a lot to catch up. So, you know the rules. Get out your note. Get out your pen, your biro, whichever one you have. I will try and run as fast as possible because I need to cover a lot today. Because by next week, I, by God's grace, I should be coming to a conclusion. And as I'm coming to a conclusion, I've already started receiving an insight of how we're going to run towards the middle of April into May. Everybody say addiction. Everybody say addiction. No, look at someone say addiction. Now, the word addiction in reality is not, you know, when you hear the word addiction, the first thing that crosses your mind is negativity. Because we're too used to be hearing the word addict, addict, drug addict. So anytime you hear addiction, you don't try to look at the deep meaning of addiction. But you see, spiritually, you can be positively addicted to very strategic things in the kingdom. Funny enough, the people that make it in the kingdom are the people that are addicted. If you are addicted to the Holy Spirit, you will make it. The word addiction full is actually the word totally dependent. It means that your life is tied to it. If you see somebody that takes drugs, if he has not taken a fix in a day, the person cannot settle down. There's something that tells him something is off. But the moment he takes the addiction, he goes high. That's when you see somebody that takes drugs. When they take the sniff, they will say, I'm high now. I'm high. And truly, they are high. Because at that moment, they start operating in, a, in some form of supremacy. There's this confidence that they have that they can take the whole world when you take any type of drug. If you're a drug addict here and you have experienced something before and the Lord has delivered you, praise God. But you will know that one of the things that you notice when you're addicted with drugs is that there will be so much boldness. So, so there's a word called addiction that by God's grace in April and May we will enter into you will understand that the reason why you are shortchanged in spiritual supremacy is because you are not addicted. When you are addicted to the scripture, listen, every part of the things you see, you will see what in it. Do you know that you can be so addicted to the word of God that you'll be looking at human beings and what is coming to you is scripture? You say, and he created man in his own image. You are looking at somebody, that's what's coming to you. You created man in his own image. You are looking at you are looking at pulpit and a word is coming to you. You are looking at phone, a word is coming to you. So, I, so I was talking about I was talking about how you get addicted in such a way that your addiction to something. Okay, I was going to talk about that this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and night. Now listen, if you're doing meditation day and night, what are you doing? That means you are not working now. So if you read that scripture, you'll be thinking you're not doing any other thing. Because if all you are doing is meditation, day, night. Because day, night is a principle of the old day. In the scripture, when you hear day, night, it actually means the old day. Because I mean, what's afternoon? What's evening? When God was creating, when God was creating the heavens and the earth, was it not day and night? So in the scripture, when you hear day and night, God is talking about the old day. That was when he was saying that when you eat, you eat twice, day and night. Do you understand now? So God does not recognize middle food. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So what he recognizes day and night. <laughs> I got somebody there now. So, so, so what we're saying is this. Meditating day and night, what scripture means really, is not that day and night you won't go to work, day and night you won't go and do anything, day and night you won't talk to people. No, that's not what it means. It means meditation means reminisce. Reminisce means thinking. It means that all day, what is going through your mind is the word. It's the, that means when you look at people, word. When you look at chair, word. When you're inside the bus, word. All of a sudden, everything that surrounds you is word. That's what's called addiction. Do you see how addiction works? So when you meditate the scripture, let's say overnight, let's say for example, when you sleep in the night, you know, out 
of the multitudes of business, a dream comes, right? So when you meditate, you know, some people are always telling me, ah, pastor, why is it that they're always chasing me in my dream? Why do people chase me? They chase me with knife today. They chase me with whatever. I mean, they chase me too, but I fight them. So they chase me, they chase me. So the question you're asking yourself, why, why, pastor, why are they? I said, listen, what you need to do is this. For you to be prepared for the night, prepare it in the day. So what you do is make sure, especially when you want to sleep, just do 40 scripture meditation. 40. Just 40. Okay, let me reduce it. 20. Just do 20. Put it, and all you are doing is this. You are just reading it. Uh, this book of the Lord shall not depart. This is the day the Lord has made. Oh, I will cast down imagination. Second yeah. Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. Okay. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Uh, you, just, just be meditating before you sleep. Even sometimes meditate. Meditate into medi-sleep, if there's any word like that. That is, as you're meditating, sleep with it. So, one of those days, as you are doing those meditation, as you're doing those meditation, as you do, and you sleep with it, one of those days, it could be one of the wrong days of the devil, that he shows up in your dream. Now, when he shows up in your dream, remember you have been empowered in your dream. You just go that you're a Christian in the dream. Do you know there are many dreams you don't know you're a Christian? Oh, talk to me, church. Do you know there's so many dreams some of you have? You're, you're not behaving like a Christian inside. Even someone will be wondering, ah, when you come out of the dream, you'll say, ah, I didn't even do like a Christian. They were calling me to dance. I was dancing in the party. What you will not normally do, you know, when you're awake. So, but in the dream, when you empower yourself and you're so addicted, when you get into the dream subconsciously, your consciousness has entered into your subconsciousness. Then you'll be acting like as if you are real. That's what meditation does. That's what addiction does. So when you are addicted, all of a sudden, you are not the one moving. It's all you are addicted to that is moving. So when you are addicted to the word, you just discover that there's word that is moving. John chapter 1 verse 14. He said, and the word. Because that's going to be our foundation. And the word became flesh. Yeah, let's read. One to go. Uh-huh. Hold on. What moved into your neighborhood? <laughs> I want you to be picking scripture. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Church, your word that the Lord has given you can become flesh and blood and move into your neighborhood. If the Lord has given you a word about your husband, the word became flesh and blood. And he came to propose. They're not here. You see how word becomes. So we'll teach how does word become. You just cover that word will wear body. For every word, every word is looking for a body to express itself. Okay. This is not what I should be teaching, but let me quickly give you another one. Hebrews 10, 6, 8. One to go, let's read. Thou hast no pleasure. Now, this is just Jesus talking. Then, next one. Verse 7. I come in the volume of book, that is what? Written of me. To do, or will, O God. So, this is Jesus talking. Verse 8. For sin, neither which are offered by the law. Next verse. Let me see. I think it's that one. Then said, I come to do, O God. Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 5. Verse 5. Aha. So this is what I've been looking for. See, but a body as thou prepared. Do you remember what we said? And the word did what? Flesh and blood, and moved into the neighborhood. So how did the word move into your neighborhood? As a body. As a body. So the word, he said three bear witness in heaven. What are they? Ah, Bible study. Oh yeah, tell the person, tell the person by your side, what was the pastor saying? Spirit bear witness on earth. What are they? The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. Three bear witness on earth. The Father, you won't know it now. Just tell you two, you know it now, so that you can use it for people. Three bear witness on earth. 
What three blessedness on earth? What are they? The spirit, the blood, and the water. Now, but in, in heaven, what are they? The Father, the Word, and the, and the Spirit, or the Holy Spirit. Now, the Word is in heaven. But the Word has to come on earth. So the Word needed a body. He now said, sacrifice and offering. That is not what you're looking for. You have, you have brought me so that I can fulfill I can fulfill the volume of book written of me. A body as thou prepared. So Jesus entered the word, entered into a body. That's the reason why he was tempted at all points. Just like you. I hope you know that Jesus was tempted by a babe. I hope you know. Are you know the Bible says he was tempted at all points, but he sinned not. It means that there is no sin you will sin that Jesus wasn't tempted. That means they would have looked at him too. Maybe they would have tried to bribe him. A baby would have come to him. Oh, you don't always. That is the only reason why he said he is touched by the, your own infirmity. So there's nothing you're going through he doesn't know, because he has also been lonely. He has been under pressure. There was a time he didn't have money. He was under pressure. He said, okay, pay tax. He said, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Okay, Peter, go, go somewhere. You will see a fish. Just get some money from there. Pay for myself and yourself. So a body, he became flesh and blood. So why am I doing this? Getting ready for April. Addiction. One day, some of you will be walking on the road because you are so addicted. The Bible said, an Enoch walk with God. And he got to a point, he disappeared. <laughs> That's what addiction does. Addiction will so hit you, you will not be, the world will not be able to influence you anymore. That's what addiction does. Because Enoch was so walking with God, walking with God, walking with God, walking with God, the guy disappeared. Everybody started looking for Enoch. Enoch had worked with God so much, he didn't remember the world. You won't be thinking, what have I not eaten? Why have I not changed my hairdo? Ah, my new clothes, my new shoe. No, no, no. You are so addicted to his presence. Your presence does not matter. It is his presence that is the essence of life. I feel I like just continue with this teaching. But let me leave it in April. So let me, <laughs> I'm already getting excited about it, but let me leave it in April. But one thing I want to get ready for, you'll be so addicted to generosity, money will be looking for you to give. Did, did you get what I said there? Do you know you can be so addicted? Now, you know, the Bible said that riches have um, wings. I hope you know riches have wings, and it flies. But have you ever asked a question, where is he flying to? So if riches are flying, he's looking for people that give it. So when he knows that this guy is so generous, you'll be wondering how money comes onto your door. Says, let's flow. Because you are generous. Sir. Your hand is never empty. It's never closed. You are always giving. So it has to come your way. That's what happened. That's what addiction does. You can be so addicted in prayer. You will be talking to somebody, but you are praying. You are talking, hey, how are you good money? But your heart is saying, no, as a friend or about those shadow. Your spirit is just praying. But you are, you are talking to somebody, but your spirit is praying. You are so you are, you are sleeping, you are praying. It's called addiction. You are just addicted. You are addicted. Everybody say addiction. That's what we're going to come into in April. You'll be, you'll be an addicted word walking. You'll be so soaked in the word of God. When you talk, you You'll be afraid to curse because it's not in you. Okay. All right. Tell somebody, say, come back home, come back home, come back home. So let's get ready to it. So, yeah, play some. <laughs> All right. So let's get back to, um, where are we? Yeah, I know when you find a favor, but where are we? What's the current topic I am now? Why, why, why? why favor? All right. What was the first point I mentioned? Favor gives access. Favor open doors. And I mentioned it. I said we need favor so that we can get into the palace. 
So there are certain people here, by God's grace, you need to be in the palace. Where you are currently is not your journey. Now, the reason why you should be in the palace is because we need you to be there so that you can establish the will of the Father. And I mentioned it very clearly, that you, God, increase you. Doesn't mean you will do what? Talk to me again. That God increase you doesn't mean you do what? Tell the person by your side that God increase you. No, let the person know. That God increase you when God increases you. It doesn't mean you increase things. It doesn't mean you buy a new car, a new shoe, a new game console. Oh, remit it again. A new game console. It doesn't mean because they promoted you means you should change your bike, change your car, change your shoe. Because God increased you. Every time there's an increase is because God has just identified a responsibility added. Church, let me tell you. If there's somebody in your neighborhood that is hungry, and God needs to bless the person. And God knows that this person does not have the faith to receive it. So what God will do is this. He will pick somebody in that neighborhood and bless the person, knowing fully well that you are somebody that gives. He will bless the person with the person's, this person's beggar resources will be in the hand of this person. Now, it will take understanding for that person to know that this increase that came is not for me, it's for that beggar that is on the street. That is why you must always remember that anything that is added to you it means a responsibility has been added to you. So because it's added to you doesn't mean it's for you. It's possibly because somebody else has come into your life. Oh, you didn't understand what I said. Let me explain it this way. When the Lord gives a baby to a couple, when the Lord gives a baby, the Bible said a child of the womb is the reward of the Lord. So when God brings a baby into your family, you are supposed to be stewards, not owners. Stay with me. If you are a steward, what will happen is that God will not give money or will give a blessing to take care of his seed. So when God gives you one baby, God will download all of the blessing that baby needs to grow to that family. Are you getting what I'm saying? So if God gives two babies, God will download. So for every baby, there's a download of his blessing to take care of that baby. Church, I'm just giving you an, I'm just giving an understanding. I get me. So if God gives you four babies, five babies, you can never say, the moment you can connect to the revelation and say, Lord, I'm just a steward. Your child is hungry. Ah, God will send a download because for every baby he sends down, there's a reward. Church, are you here? I get what I'm saying now. Okay. Just like when you marry a woman, when God sends a good woman to your life, God sends a download of favor to take care of the woman. Because God has already said that man should be able to take care of his household. So when God brings a, a lady into your house, God will prepare the man to be able to take care. So God, in his infinite wisdom, has planted the thing to take care of the woman in the woman. Church, you are not here. Honey, come. What that means is, if, if, if I'm trying to propose to this lady... If I'm trying to propose to this lady, what God is saying, relax. What, what God is saying is this, because I know she's doing her face somehow. What God is saying is this. It means, Emmanuel, listen, if you're going to marry this princess of mine, if you're going to marry this daughter of mine, I have placed a grace inside of her. You have to take care of her. I say, yes, Lord. You have to nurture her. I say, yes, Lord. You have to coach her. I say, yes, Lord. Then God has said, listen, because I know that you don't have anything, I have also put inside of her everything that she, everything you will need to culture her, everything that you will need to nurture her. So she came packed. She didn't come empty. There is no wife that came to your house empty. They all came packed. But what do you need to do as a man? You need to unpack. How do you unpack? Understanding, discernment, patience. Under, you now begin to unpack. You now begin to pull favor of blessing. You pull favor of prosperity. Now because in a good house, after you have unpacked, is still the wife that should really enjoy. You see how you're culturing her now? You see how you're culturing her now? So that means if you make so much money, forget about all these funny men, if you make so much money, if you buy a Prado or you buy whatever, it is the wife that should drive the best cars. It is the wife. So, no, you, you, no, 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 you don't give the second hand her car. To her. Uh, uh, uh. She should drive the good car. I get what I'm saying now. Why? Because, hey, oh God, you are tapping into what has been packed. 
You are only taking advantage of what has been packed in her. Oh, listen, women, when a man wants to propose to you, you say, tell the man, oh God, calm down. I am packed. I, I don't know what I'm saying. And so you, you'll be telling the guy, I am packed already. So when you are coming to me, make sure you can unpack. It takes, it takes proper precision to know how to unpack. Because if you're not careful, you will break the pack. And if you break the pack, oh my God, you will not get the resources. You'll be frustrated. That's why so many men are frustrated with their wife. They can't get resources. They don't know how to get the blessing. They are just angry. They will not be telling the woman, you are telling what should bless you that that thing is not well. What's wrong with you? Sit down there. Does that make sense? <laughs> Does that make sense? Is it clear now? So I want you to always have an understanding about how God operates. One of the major problems of Christendom is your understanding of operations. Sincerely, you'd have been better than this if you have more understanding. Funny enough, your level now is your understanding. You would have been better off. You see, when you hear so many things that people say, this one is not rich, this one is not doing well, I always ask them, find out. Find out. Don't rush. Find out. That guy may be a lazy guy. He's praying so well. He's a, he's a prayer merchant for a lazy man. He prays. He can pray. When you say, what do you want to pray? He say, I'll pray. I'll pray. When he say, who will pray in the night? I'll pray in the night. Who will pray in the morning? I'm here. One time she said, okay, okay. You are praying morning night. Dude, you don't do anything. <laughs> He said, no, 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 pastor, I'm called to prayer. Hey, you are called to prayer. You are called to hunger too. Hear you? Because before you know what's happening, you'll be hungry. Because some people don't understand that, listen, there are principles in the kingdom. If you don't walk the principle, you can't enjoy the life of the kingdom. The kingdom is based on principles, sir. And I see a lot of Christians, it pains me. Because I know you have tried. You have fasted. You have prayed. You've done a lot, but no result. And I look at you and say, ha, ha, this guy has done so well, though. But no result. Okay, you know what? You're not principled. You don't have character. You lack character. You lack it. Any small thing, we look at you. Some of you, oh, pastor, this is not what you'll be preaching. Let me go back to what I should be preaching. And don't be, don't be, let me don't be. Because I wanted to remind some people that you will not believe that the only reason why you have not been receiving the blessing is because you don't know the place of regard. You don't know how to regard people. You don't know how to honor people. You don't even know what they call respect. Pastor, don't go there. Let me touch you a bit. Let me touch you a bit. Now, because you are anointed, doesn't mean you should always walk in your annoyance. Because sometimes you may be anointed and you are freely, you will just be annoyed and be talking to people anyhow. It's a wrong principle in the spirit. You are not given to control anybody anyhow. You should always remember that there's one thing God does not like when you talk to his church anyhow. Do you know that when Moses tried it, God had to look at him. God, God was trying to warn him that what's wrong with you? So because, because, I mean, you remember when I was angry, I told you, I said, Moses, move away, move away. Let me kill the whole of Israel and make of you another nation. Moses said, no, 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 Lord, ah, come on. Lord, if you do that, they will say, ah, ah, you brought your people all the way from Egypt only to come and kill them in the wilderness. Guys, guys, God was actually testing the heart of Moses. Because after a while, <laughs> Moses now entered into what God was going through. They now also provoke Moses. <laughs> Church, you are not here. I said, they now also provoke Moses. You know they provoke God. God said, move away, let me, let me. Ah, God, relax now. God, you are God. God said, okay, okay, I've done my own. Your own is coming. <laughs> they now provoke Moses. Moses said, these people have stubborn people, stiff-necked people. God says, speak to the, to speak to the rock. He took the, 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 the uh, what do you call it? <laughs> the staff. He hit the rock. Wah! God did not disgrace him publicly, but he withdrew him privately from the blessing. Because God did, eh? God now had a conversation. Ah, ah. Oh, God, you just advised me. You know, some of you, you are advisor to God. You can advise God. You know, some of us are God's advisor. Don't say, ah, ah, but you advise me now that I should not be angry. But look at you. You did not even waste time. You hit the rock. You call the people stiff-necked people. The Zion, the church of God, you call them stiff-necked. Oh, God, you are all my most miserable. I'm very careful when I'm talking to church. Because listen, you can, I've, I've rebuked before, and I think God checked my spirit. Say, hey, bro, you need to be careful. That you are given freedom doesn't necessarily mean you have to use it anyhow. 
that you are a leader doesn't mean you speak to people anyhow. That you that you are older doesn't mean that, <laughs> that you are older doesn't mean you have to put people under hardship and unnecessary subjection. Be very careful. I just feel like to tell somebody here, the reason why you have not been gaining what you should gain is that you disregard a lot. You disregard a lot. You disregard a lot. And it's in little things. Little things. You disregard a lot. All right. So we said open doors, right? All right. What was the second one? Huh? To restore everything that the enemy has stolen. Now, some of you write it down because I preach it on Sunday. You say, I won't be repeating things. I'll just be continuing. I've told you before. I won't stop. I'll just go to the next one. So we said favor. One of the reasons why favor is important is that God is using it to restore everything that had been stolen. And that was why Egypt, God told Israel, go and meet all the Egyptians and ask them for anything that you want. If you want to remember the message, go to, go to the second service. I said a lot about it. And they went and they were asking them for gold, for silver, for gold skin, for dolphin skin. And, and they were asking them and, and they were asking for whatever they want. The reason why God allowed them to get everything they want was because God was also going to ask them later. Because freely have you received. Freely give. That's all freely have you received. Say it very well. Freely have you received. Now say this one loudly. Freely give. So when God was telling them to give gold, silver, gold skin, everything, God was giving them because he was going to build his altar, his sanctuary. And when God came, God help you, you have used the dolphin skin to sew buba or danshiki. Because when God came to start asking, I said, um, now we want to build a sanctuary. Um, Falakemi, like please give us the goat's hair. Precious, give us the dolphin skin. God was not asking specifically what they took. So, people that took dolphin skin, that kept it, God, can we have goat's hair there? God needs it for the sanctuary. Uh, who took the silver? Uh, those, 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 please, can we have the silver? Um, who took? So all of them were not bringing. So if you have used yours to sew buba, you have to remove the buba straight away because you need to submit it to the priest because they're going to use it to work in the sanctuary. But the Bible says that they were given and given and given that the priest said, hey, stop. It's too much. Church, what, how did they spoil Egypt? History tells us that when Israel left Egypt, Egypt went into bankruptcy. <laughs> when Israel left Egypt, everybody was everybody, everybody became poor. Because they took everything. You are hearing goat's hair, dolphin skin. Are you not hearing the one of them? They took oils, they took silver, they took precious stones. God had a picture in his mind. His picture was a sanctuary. So God is not asking you to take things just to look good. He likes you to look good. He delights in the prosperity of his servants. He loves them to look good. He wants you to enjoy life. No, 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 don't get God wrongly. He wants you to have lovely time. He wants you to go to a resort. He wants you to be at the beach side. He wants you to have those fun. But he's saying, while you're doing that, always know the priority. The priority is not the car. Don't let the car become the priority. Don't let the house be your focus. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Church is a simple principle. Just make sure that your sight is on what he has said. All these other things will always come. <sighs> secret. Everybody says secret. These are secret of the kingdom that people don't use. Just seek 
first. No, no, I'm not saying seek. Seek first because you may be seeking at the same time. No, don't seek it together. Seek first. Don't seek God, then seek it. No, seek first. If you're going to do anything, think of him first. Think of when you're going to get anything, think of him first. Lord, what would you have me do? What would you have me do on this one? Seek first. If you do that, then you have control of what favor should do in your life. You see, God is checking all of us to see whether I can trust us with favor. Every one of us here. And shockingly, a lot of us have been tested. Even some of you are having a second chance now. Because you failed him the last time. Some of you have been tested with favor. God has brought certain... You see, some of you should have left this level you are at now. God gave you opportunity, but you wasted that opportunity that time. He came. He came. Even some of you, as I'm talking now, you remember certain memories that God brought a flow of abundance. When that flow came, you thought it was for you and your household. You didn't understand the principle then to know that when that abundance came, the question should be asking, say, Lord, what would you have me do with this abundance? But is it not sickening, really, that all of a sudden, people bring things to your house, then you sit down by yourself and be eating it. You know what those guys, those four leprous guys, you know what they said? When they got to the enemy's camp and they discovered there was nobody there, you remember their story? And they started eating. Ah, oh boy, <laughs> oh boy. They were just saying, man, praise God. Praise God, multitudes of blessing. One of them just said, ah, 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 hold on, hold on, guys, guys, guys. What we are doing is not well, low. Ah, something bad might happen to us. Because we saw an abundance doesn't mean we should cover it. That's what some of us do. When abundance comes to you, some of you don't look up. Look up. Look up. There's somebody that needs your shoe. Look up. There's somebody that needs that your back. Look up. Listen, there's a principle I've learned in my life. It has made me light. Don't let what you call the blessing stay too long in your hand. Everybody say freely give. No, look at that person and say freely give. You know why you have always been, you've always been in the recipient point of place? It's because you've never told yourself that I always want to be that is more blessed. It is blessed to receive, but it's more blessed to give. And the distance between receiving and giving is far. I'm not teaching giving and receiving, but I'm just trying to teach you the secrets of the kingdom that some of us practice up to where we are now. And it's not just giving of things as money. I hope you know kindness can become a gift. Do you know that calling someone just to check on the person, how you doing, becomes a gift? Finding out how they feel, even though you are going through your own pain, but checking somebody how they feel can become a gift. Do you know, do you know that I, I learned, I learned, I learned that when Jesus Christ was rebuking certain people and not allowing them to enter into his rest, he asked them a simple question. When they said, we prophesied in your name, we healed in your name, he asked them a simple question. He said, when I was sick, you didn't visit me. He said, when I was in the prison, you didn't show up. He just dropped on me. Dad, do you know that the secret of the kingdom, visitation is there? Do you know to go out of your way and go and check someone going through pain and just, I just came, not that you brought anything, but I came to stay with you. It is recognized in heaven. It is a seed. So there's something called the seed of visitation. That's why if you see in the Old Testament, they do a lot of visitation. But you see, your generation has killed it. Because a lot of you cannot go into visitation again. I do visitations a lot. My wife and I. We've gone to some weird places in those days just to visit someone. And every time we come, say, hey, pastor, wow, you came. Yes, I 
came to sow a seed. I sowed a seed. You know, when they come in those days to come and name children, people don't know why I go to do those names. They always feel, oh, we like Pastor Manuel, Pastor Manuel, like to name the children. No, 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 no. I'm also going to sow a seed. I don't do anything for doing sake. I'm on a transaction mode when I'm dealing with my father. Every move I make is transactional. I'm on a transaction mode. You must know what am I doing. Am I sowing into the kingdom? Scripture was saying, it's if you must sow, sow to the kingdom. Sow on the heavens where there are no teeth, there is no mold. It can't decay. They can't cheat you. He said, don't sow here on earth. Always use that principle. Okay. So the third one. So running fast. It is an end time strategy of the kingdom to create wealth. Why favor? It is an end time strategy of the kingdom to create wealth. Isaiah chapter 60. Verse 4 to 5, NLT. Why favor? Church, the reason why God is introducing favor in this end time is that wealth is needed in the kingdom. Wealth is needed in the kingdom. There are certain things you can't do without wealth. Even let me put it this way. There are certain territories you cannot take. Okay, in those days when they used to do evangelism, in those days, we go to door to door. Is that not right? So we go to knock people's door. We preach to them. We do that. Yeah, that was working in the 1980s. Then estate burst out. Strategic estates. Now you can't go door. If you go to the gate of the estate, they won't allow you in. What are you doing here? We... Um, we are the evangelical team, evangelical team of Potter's house. Ah. God help you is one malam that is meeting you. Yeah. Evangelical. Team. How do you speak that your house has it? Eh? Is <laughs> it <laughs> 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 menini or whatever? <laughs> Evangelism of Potter's house. Potter what? <laughs> when you're, what do you want to chase somebody? What do you use again? You know, my wife is an awesome person. So, all of a sudden, Listen, guys, listen. All of a sudden, God now knows that there are estates. He needs to preach to them inside the estate. Strategy. How do we enter the estate? <laughs> ah, pastor, they pay five million. They pay five million for three bedroom. Okay, okay, okay. Five million. Okay, but we need to ship three people into that place. Okay, all right. Uh, where's blessing? Okay, blessing. Now, nah, this, this strategy is going on. No, strategy is going on. Blessing. Um, uh, uh, Randy, Emmanuel. So God says, okay, what are they doing? Ah, they are working in one bank. One is a, um, what's the lowest level in banking again? Eh? Data entry, Teller. Okay, one is Teller. The other one is, uh, you know, so, so, okay, okay, okay. We need to promote them. We need to promote them. Watch, watch God. We need to promote them. Oh, so how do we promote them? Okay, um, this is what we're going to do. Uh, give them a favor so that they are selected among the people that will go for the banking officer training. Psh, strategy has started. <laughs> then all of a sudden, someone that is a teller, they list their names to go for training. Now, watch. God, when God is lifting a man, God also has principle. So it's not that you just see a teller become MD. Are you getting what I'm saying? No, 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 it's not magic. It's favor. Favor has pattern. I get what I'm saying. So what God will not do, he will set up. Then the person will go for training. Then he goes for training. Then while he's in the backing officer training, while he's training, he just becomes the best. Then they notice her. Say, I ah, will love the way this girl works. They say, then somebody will just like her, maybe a senior manager. I say, please, can you come and work closer with me? Then the senior manager, she will now be a senior manager. She's working with the senior manager. But as she's working with the senior manager, the senior manager says, ah, every work that an assistant manager can do, this girl is doing it. Even though she's just a mere banking officer. Then an opportunity pops up that somebody should apply. They say, ah, Funke, apply. And she applies. Then she goes for the interview. Then favor goes ahead of her again. 
<laughs> Are you watching? And then she does the, does the interview. And she just, you know, just clear it. Then I say, ah, what are you? He said, I'm a banking officer. Wow, that is fantastic. Then she gets, all of a sudden, she gets maybe assistant banking officer, assistant banking manager or something. She gets it. Church, as God is opening that door, you know where God is watching? Where is God watching? The estate. So all of a sudden, promotion comes. Then they move her money from 200K or 400K. She's not making up to like maybe 15 million or something like that. Then God will just whisper to her spirit. She'll be thinking she's the one thinking it. One day she's just driving past the estate. You just say, ah, and I like this estate. No, funny, no, no. This, this is the way it works. This is the way it works. Before that promotion come, she would have been driving past that estate. Then God would have been, would have been saying, ah, and I like this estate. Oh, ah. Well, people, it's not people that have to wear that stay there. One day we just trust God, we trust God, we trust God. God would have planted that feeling inside of her. That's why sometimes you'll be thinking it's your voice, it's God's voice. God just, you know, you know when the Bible says that my thoughts are not your thoughts, that means God introduced thoughts into people's heart. That is him speaking. So it's not every time you must hear, eh, thus said my, thus said the Lord, my son, my son, eh, Mary, Mary. No, 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 no. God, God, it's not every time, it can happen to some people, but that doesn't, that, that does not mean that's the only way God talks. So he exchanges thoughts with your thoughts. Then guess what? She now gets the promotion. She makes that amount of money. It just crosses her mind. That estate. I can rent it. Then she builds a lot of faith. Then she goes, please, how much do you rent this place? Say, oh, um, they look at her. Say, ah, can you show you can pay for this? Say, yeah, well, let's just trust God. Then all of a sudden, she gets the favor. She gets the place. She enters. Now, this is how God operates. The moment she enters into the estate, because she's the child of the Most High, and she has always thought of God first. So the moment she enters, she just looks at the estate. And she go for the first meeting, called resident and owner's meeting. She now gets there. She now sees people that normally she will not meet, not being inside the estate. And But you know she's an evangelist. When she was not in the estate, she was evangelizing everywhere. But now she's in an estate, she now sees people. God now says, daughter, say yes, this is your territory. Say yes, Lord. Then she now can now have the right to go from door to door because she's in the estate. So there are promotions that are coming for you to enter into certain environment is not meant for you to go and sit down. It's an opportunity that God wants to use you as a tool. So some of you are going to sit with the governor and you are sitting down like this. You are the youngest among them. But God just gave you a channel so that you can minister to the governor's ears. Some of you are going to be the friend to the PA, to the commissioner. The reason why you have that access is that you can minister grace that will get to the commissioner. So that any time the commissioner is looking for counsel from the PA, the PA has bounced it off you. Shh. You are controlling the commissioner from a distance because the PA is bouncing ideas off you. You guys have gotten quiet now. Do you understand what I'm saying? Does it make sense to you? I'm trying to make, I'm trying to teach it in, in such a way like a teacher and a student so that you can get it practically, not, not just hear the revelation, get it practically. That for every time God blesses you, it's not just you. Funny enough, you are the last in the agenda when the blessing lands. Because scriptures say preferring others than yourself. That means anytime something up, prefer. Prefer. Okay. So it's an end time strategy. Open, we, we said Isaiah chapter 60, right? 4 to 5. Let's read. Let's read. One to go. Oh, come on. Let's read in concert. What to go? For everyone is what? Oh, tell someone, say everyone is coming home. Now you'll understand, this is a prophetic word. So follow it very well. Everyone is coming home, yes, go on. Oh, declare, say my sons are coming from distant lands. Go on. Your little daughters will be carried home. <laughs> Woo! 
Woo! You don't know what that means. They will be in the shoulder of kings and shoulder of queens. That's what they're saying. Your little daughters will be carried home. Go on. Oh my God. You don't know what that means. It means enlightenment. Your eyes will shine. There will be clarity of thought. You will know what to do. Go on. Oh, you are not, you are not here, church. He said your heart will what? Thrill. We what? With joy. For what? Hold on there. Seller. For what? What will come? From merchants around the world. We do what? How will a merchant around the world come to you? Let me give you an example. You have an innovation they are looking for. Then all of a sudden, you just discover that a seed will be created in the spirit. And investors will be looking for it. Around the world. How did Flutter Wave start? Seed. And merchants from the world started looking for them. Many fintech companies seed. Innovation. And merchants from the world started looking for them. There's one of us that had a great testimony. He's going to share it very soon. The person has already gone to the UK now. Merchants from the wall started looking for him. By one innovation. That he applied his innovation. People rose from the US, from Canada, from UK. And they said, even though they've not seen the result, they said, we see potential. By potential alone brought him to the UK. Church, are you here? Merchants from around the world will come. And what would they do? Talk to me, they'll do what? These merchants that are coming are coming with wealth. You know, I mentioned in second service, I said partnership is coming. Yes. I said there was somebody here that there's partnership. Something is coming. A partnership that is higher than you. Yes. A partnership that is higher. That means when they join you, they'll just push you up. Go, go to the next verse. Verse 6, let's see. Go on, want to go? The people of Sheba will bring gold and frankincense and will come worshiping the Lord. I think there's something in verse 7. Oh, the flocks of Keda will be given to you and the ram of Nebot will be brought for. Will be brought for what? What's the ram for? Oh, top of the church. What's the rams for? Not your birthday. What's the rams for? Not your 40th. What's the rams for? And I will accept what they are offering. And I will make my temple. What is the objective? To do what? Make his temple glorious. I think there's a good, I think the next verse too has something. Okay, all right. Let's leave it at that. In Isaiah chapter 64 to 5, in the Amplified Version, he said, lift up your eyes, run about you and see. They all gather themselves. They come to you. Your sons will come from afar. Your daughters shall be carried and nursed in the hand. Then you shall see and be radiant. And your heart shall thrill and tremble with joy and be enlarged because the abundant wealth of the Dead Sea. The abundant wealth of the Dead Sea. How many of you have heard about the Dead Sea before? The Dead Sea. Now, let me give you a, a, bit, of, a bit of knowledge here. Prior to the 20th century, scholars could only speculate as to what Isaiah have meant by this. The, aban the abundant wealth of Dead Sea. That would, uh, that would one day be turned over to Jerusalem. Of course, the Dead Sea, which for ages had been considered only a place of death and desolation, was ruled out as possible meaning. When you hear Dead Sea, I mean, it doesn't make sense, right? Then suddenly it was discovered that the waters of the Dead Sea contain important chemicals. In AD 1935, by G.T.B. Davis, this is what he wrote, one is almost staggered by the computed wealth of the chemical salt of the Dead Sea. It is estimated that the potential value of the potash, bromine, and other chemical salt of its water is four times the wealth of the United States. That's what has been discovered about the Dead Sea in 1934. 
Who, so you will hear, Isaiah himself did not know this, but God who caused the Dead Sea to play a part in his program in the last days knew all about it. And he led the prophet to prophesy that there's going to come a time that the wealth in the Dead Sea will be so mighty four times that of the wealth of the United States of America. The objective of why favor is because Lord is gathering wealth for the church so that he might establish his kingdom. Wealth is needed. There is nothing, listen, people have preached it differently. They've been telling you about you getting things, having things. No, that's not how it should have been preached. We're saying that the church needs to be wealthy so that we can be able to establish its territories. It's not that you should have things. No, you will have things, but you should be wealthy. You should prosper in the things that you do. And you should know that the word wealth means that you are able to have it when you need it. That is what it means to be wealthy. You have it when you need it. When God needed money, when Jesus needed money, he got it when he needed it. When he needed a ride into Jerusalem, he got a donkey. When he needed, he didn't need to have connection. All he needed was, he was a wealthy man. Jesus was a wealthy man on earth. And if he's the one that we, we are supposed to emulate, if he's the one we are supposed to be, an, to be an example to us, then if there's anything we should know is that we must be wealthy. I'm not saying you should have money. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm saying you can be wealthy by a network, for example. You can be wealthy by the people you associate with. You can be wealthy with the innovation you carry in your spirit. You can be wealthy with the idea that God has placed in your heart. There are some of you that are so wealthy, but you don't know yet. Some of you are seated here. So much wealth in your spirit. So much wealth in your thoughts. So much wealth in your thinking. Funny enough, some of you, your wealth is in the location you are going to. Some of you, you need to be at a particular location to resume into your wealth. I tell people there are two types of blessing. I always tell people that there are two types of blessing. Catch this. There's a blessing where the Lord sends you to a location. Adam, yes. Get thee out of your country. Get thee out of your people. And I will show you a place that you should be. Okay, Lord. So I'm sending Adam, sorry, I'm sending Abraham to a place where the blessing will ride on him. It's a season. So God sends some of you, that's why some people, some of you are sent to this church so that it becomes your place of wealth. It means you receive your revelation to come into your wealth. That's why you are sent here. You can't be here forever. So you must understand what it means by location. Some of you are dislocated. And I hope you know for every dislo dislocation there is pain. Oh church, you didn't hear what I said there. If you move your hand this way, that's not the location. You start feeling pain. Is that alright? You start feeling irritated. If I start bending your hand, that's not the posture of your hand. You start feeling pain. Why? It's dislocated. So some of you in terms of location, you've, you are currently in dislocation. Some of you are in a relationship. It is a dislocation, not your location. So God will send you to a location because your blessing is attached to that location. That's why I didn't want to change my NYC. I didn't want to change my, my, my copper when they, when they sent me on the assignment that I should go to Illinois. I didn't want to change it. A lot of people changed their eyes. Some people said they were going. Some people said they were, they were just redirecting. Some people were moving to Lagos. I didn't want to change my I didn't, I just I just trusted God. I said, Lord, is that the location? I said, let's go. Let's go. I just trusted God. Funny enough, that's where I met my wife. Do you understand what I'm saying now? So, because I believe so much in God sending you to a location. So I followed it because I saw Abraham that God sent him to a location. Then he was blessed in that location. So the location in itself is the assignment of obedience. Because what God is blessing, in quote, is not the location. What God is blessing is the obedience. As far as God is concerned, God will always move at your point of your last obedience. God will never move past your last obedience. If you are disobedient, God will wait until you come back to the place of obedience before he can be manifesting his blessing again upon you. He doesn't change his rules based on you. Scripture cannot be broken because of you. Forever, oh God, your word is settled in heaven. God doesn't move for anybody. You are the one that moves. He said, if you draw near unto me, I will draw near unto you. So you are the one that moves. Church, are you here? Church, are you here? So obedience. So I said number one is what? Blessing what? Uh -huh, you are here in church. Some people are not here. These people have gone there. Uh, blessing what? I 
attached to a location. But the second one is the higher one. This is where you become a location. This is not where God sent you to a location. This is when you become the location. It means anywhere you arrive is the blessing. Church, are you getting what I'm saying? I say it's a level. It means you will get to a point in your life you have so much obeyed God that God doesn't think twice. When you now go, this is the word you'll be using. I see the Lord do it and I do it. My father walk it and I walk. That's, the, that's your behavior now. It's no, more, it's no more now that, oh, God told me to come. No, I see my father do it and I do it. So you are, you are now a blessing. So you are now a blessing. So that's when you can now sing the song that all of you always sing that you like so much. My hands are blessed. My hands are blessed. In the blessings of the Lord. What the blessings of the Lord. Now, 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 I hope you know that song is not everybody. Now, listen, you people sing too much. You know that song is not for everybody. Because to be sincere, not all hands are blessed. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. We've been singing that song many times. Huh? All the people you have been laying hands upon. Where is it? Wait, do you know why some of us are always careful to lay hands on people? Me personally. You know I'm always careful. Why I'm always careful is because if I, if I check you and I've been laying hands upon you and nothing's happening, I'll go and question myself, bros, stop laying hands. Are you sure you're not even bringing these people down? You are, you, are, you, are, you are causing more trouble than putting your hand on their head. You know why? Because not normally spiritually, when you lay hands, laying of hands is a doctrine of translation. It's a doctrine of transition. You are transferring a spirit into somebody. Or an empowerment. So if you are laying hands on people and nothing is happening, or oh God is a confirmation oh, that there's nothing here. Oh. <laughs> All right. Because of time, let me leave it here. But write this down. The fourth one. We'll take it on Sunday. We'll take it on Sunday. Why favor? Because it is a battle weapon to fight this end time. Why favor? It's a battle weapon. Favor is a battle weapon. Pastor, how is favor a battle weapon? Favor is the only weapon where you don't know fight is going on in your life and they are fighting for you. Favor is the only weapon. You won't know that there's a fight going on, but people are actually rising up and they're fighting for you, but you don't know it's actually your fight they're fighting. It is only when you get there, they say, what happened? Ah! Oh God, they almost removed your name from the list. I didn't know. <laughs> but we fought them. We said, no, that you did well. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't. Favor. That's what happened to Mordecai. Mordecai didn't know what was going on. They were going to kill Mordecai, but favor was working things for him. Lift up your hand, church. I pray today for everybody here. In your absence, I see favor rise for you. Without your knowing, without your knowing, you are not even aware where they want to remove you from what has been arranged for you. You are not even aware. But I pray for you today that favor will become your defense. I said you are not even aware. But favor becomes a battle axe. The Bible says favor shall be like a shield. So I see favor as a shield for you. In the name of Jesus. I pray for, for people who are trusting God for the next level here. Some of you have stayed too long at a position. I'm praying that this season the unusual favor of God will rest upon that person. You will experience a sudden good news that will trigger the next level for you. Something will push you. Church, I'm telling you, I don't know what level you are, but something will push you. Before the end of this year, you'll be among that will celebrate it. I said, I changed level. I said, one of you will celebrate it. He said, I changed a level. And it's not just one level. Some of you it will happen. It will be happening consistently. 
It will be a ceaseless flow from today. In the name of Jesus. It will be a ceaseless flow from today. I pray for somebody here. There's a tears of joy you've not had in years. Most of the time, if they look at your record, it has been attached to tears, but has been of sorrow. As we're teaching and preaching this, we proclaim and declare upon you that before the end of this year, you will experience tears of joy. Ah, your tears will be all. Oh, your tears will be, why me, oh God? Let me put up Psalm, one, Psalm 121, I think. Let me check it out then. I want to proclaim and pronounce on somebody here the thing that will make it look like a dream. That some of you will be wondering, no, no, give me, give me, is this Psalm 127, I think? 126? 126. Psalm 126. He said, when the Lord turned again, when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, he said, we were like them that dream. Look at the next verse. Look at the next verse, verse 2. What is the sign of when there's a turn? These are the signs. He said, my mouth shall be filled with laughter. And what? Our tongue will break forth into singing. Then what will happen again? Then they will say among them that the Lord has done great things for them. Now look at verse 3. It was like a remember. The Lord has done great things for us. Wherefore we are glad. I think the next verse, verse 4. Now give it again. Is that what again? Turn. Oh, open your mouth and say, turn again, oh God. For watching the Potter's House of Lagos Global Broadcast. For more information, please visit www.thepottershouseoflagos.org. You can also follow us on all our social media platforms to stay up to date with everything we're doing here in this ministry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.